It is Friday, July 23rd. Let's talk PlayStation. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the show. As always, let's start with our PS Plus reminder. The July games are still available. A Plague Tale Innocence, Call of Duty, WWE 2K Battlegrounds, Virtual Fighter 5. Make sure you grab these before they go away. Uh, for our first story, let's talk about yesterday, actually, because PSN was down for a bit, uh, about an hour and a half, two hours. Wasn't terribly long, but this was actually something where, where it affected a lot of sites and services. So uh, Steam, I think Xbox as well, Apple had some issues, a few streaming services, a few websites. I'm not sure how widespread it really was, but it was something where a lot of places were affected, so it wasn't just isolated to PSN. But it's something where PSN was back up, and during that short moment where it was down, if you attempted to log in on PS5, we did see a very cool little quality of life improvement where if you attempted to log in, it would give you a specialized message that would say, services are busy right now, we'll be back soon. Which is just a, a big improvement over PS3, 4, and Vita where you would get, uh, well, they would spit out an error code and that would make you think that there's something wrong with your console or your connection. Thus, you're going to go to the computer and furiously look up if other people are having that issue. And I guess that would still happen in this in this situation, but still, it's just a, a quality of life update that I thought was much needed, and it was now put into use. Moving on to our next news story, PlayStation and Apple have teamed up to offer Apple TV Plus for free for PS5 owners. Um, this deal will run from, well, yesterday to July 22nd, 2022, so this deal will be available for a year, and that's how long you have until you can either take advantage of it or buy a PS5 and then sign up but you have to do it from a PS5 console. So this is kind of like uh, how the PS Plus collection was handled. You can't really sidestep this. So on a PS5, you have to download the Apple TV Plus app, sign in with an Apple ID or make one right there, and you can claim the deal that way. Also works for existing customers as well. So if you're already paying for it, then you'll just get six months for free. Not too bad. This is Apple's original streaming service with original content on there as well. Some people like it, but clearly they've got a bit of a customer acquisition problem. So this is just one of the many things that they're trying out here. Um, so if not, I mean, freeze free, right? Uh, just make sure that you have the, uh, the auto renewal turned off for this because that's more than likely how they're trying to get you. Six months is a long time. So even if you don't like it, you might, uh, you might forget that you actually took advantage of this. Next up, we recently got a new story trailer for Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut and uh, more details on the Iki Island expansion, which so far, uh, for the trailer at least, it looks gorgeous. I mean, I didn't think this game could look any more <laughs> beautiful than it already did on PS4, but, um, you know, perhaps that was a bit naive just based off these shots. It looks it looks really pretty. Uh, but in terms of story uh, and what takes place on Iki Island, to summarize, we were told that, and it's kind of expected, but there's a, a new Mongol group, a new tribe that's uh, gained a pretty large traction on Iki, led by a shaman known as the Eagle. Jin returns to Iki Island to confront this group, and here's where we'll also get a look into the dark past of Clan Sakai. Iki itself is more lawless, so it's going to be filled with criminals like pirates and smugglers. And then also, over on the uh, Sucker Punch Twitter account, they did reveal that there's these animal sanctuaries you can encounter throughout the island, and you can play melodies on your flute, and you can calm them down to the point where like the fox you can pet them so deer monkeys and also cats a uh, bit of an understatement that i was uh you know rather excited to see this functionality um being built upon right we did foxes at first now there's more animals i but i love animals uh but it's the game sounding great so far i mean it's something where if you haven't played it really is uh something where you're going to be much better off buying this version if you've been holding off on actually playing it again i didn't finish it i was about halfway through so i'm definitely moving over a save file uh, to finish it there and uh, there's probably a lot more that we're still not seeing of course which sucker punch will inform us on up until the release come august 20th now if you like genshin impact then this story is for you because well, one, I didn't think any of us really saw this coming, but two, uh, Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn, Horizon Forbidden West, she will be a playable character in Genshin Impact. And I love the art that they already put out for her. It looks so good. Um, now, we don't have full details on, you know, how she fits in or how she'll play or anything like that, but with the version 2.1 in the game, you'll be able to claim her on PS4 and PS5 exclusively through the in-game mail system. And then after version 2.2, that's when Aloy will be available on all platforms, again, through the in-game mail system. Uh, but this is something where we've seen Sony uh, really flex their IP and put them everywhere. So Aloy, as an example, we saw her in Fortnite and that character model too actually looked very fitting for that that game it worked quite well and then uh well our next news story actually is about fall guys so 
Not only is Fall Guys uh, Season 5 going on right now, but Sony has partnered here as well where they're offering Ratchet & Clank uh, bean costumes. So this will be uh, a small event that runs in the game, uh, the first one being July 26th to August 1st. So the Ratchet Limited event will offer challenges players can complete to unlock the costume, banner, emote, and then from August 6th to the 16th, another challenge will run for players to unlock Clank in the same manner. So yeah, PlayStation's getting very collaborative lately, allowing their IP to have this exposure to all these high player count games. And it's not like Sony doesn't have a, it's not like they have a problem with these games not being well known, right? Everybody knows Ratchet, even Aloy, Kratos, uh, but Sony does want to continue pushing that brand of these are PlayStation characters, right? And so even though you're using these costumes and such on PC, but also Switch, Xbox, mobile, where it's a where it's applicable, um, they are just trying to push and grow that brand even further. And it's just more that, um, again, it's that recognition of going, oh, this is a PlayStation character. We're probably going to see a lot more of this just based off of how frequently they've been doing it um, so far. For our next news story, it was recently discovered in the Netflix app source code that there were some PlayStation assets inside there. Uh, two images actually, one being for Ghost of Tsushima and another one being DualSense controllers. So why would PlayStation assets be in the Netflix app source code? This led many to theorize that maybe something's going on between Sony and Netflix, especially because we saw a prior history there where Sony somewhat recently signed a deal with Netflix for Sony movies after their theatrical run to go to Netflix and then also for Netflix there's been some running rumors swirling around that they're looking into getting into the game's business in some way shape or form we just don't really know how right and there's two ways they can go about doing that which is either doing it completely themselves kind of like Google or Amazon you know hiring a studio building a platform or something like that which would be a massive uphill battle or they could partner with an existing company say Sony for example so that's kind of what most people um, were theorizing for the past week and at least right now in the short term we can say that's not happening Netflix has formally announced that uh, their current gaming strategy if you want to call it that is to offer free mobile games with uh, their existing uh, tier so no price increase just you get free mobile games off the top which is fine. Uh, Netflix right now, uh, they actually went down. They lost subscribers in this last quarter, I believe. So a lot of analysts are thinking that they've uh, potentially peaked or, you know, they've reached a, a certain type of market saturation for themselves where they kind of have to branch out to other sectors and try to increase the value proposition that way, which depending on what Sony and Netflix would have done if it were real, I mean, that would have been pretty intriguing because that's what they'd have to do is partner with somebody else, right? If they really tried to do their own thing like Google or Amazon, that would have, we all know that probably wouldn't have worked out too well. Even being in the business as an indie dev or even a AAA developer and publisher taking a big bet on a new emerging genre. I mean, so many ideas and companies and people fail all the time. It's a very tough business to, to thrive in. So to be outside of it and working your way in, it's just, um, you know, the enthusiasm is not high in that respect. So to see what Sony and Netflix maybe would have offered would have been uh, very interesting. But right now, at least, we can't say that's what's happening. Next up, we've got a rumor regarding Haven Studios. Jade Raymond's recently formed a Montreal-based developer that PlayStation signed on not too long ago. And if you remember a month back, we had some job listings pretty much telling us what this game was probably going to be. The qualifications were people with experience in the multiplayer space or the live service-based game space. So that was kind of obvious. Uh, this rumor, same deal here. So it is a rumor, but apparently a message from a recruiter passed over to Multiplayer.it, which this site is in Italian, but translated it says that the project Haven is working on is going to be an online games as a service title for PlayStation 5. And if you've been keeping up at this point, we've got Firewalk Studios that was signed on first. That's multiplayer, former developers of Destiny, Call of Duty, Apex Legends. Herman Hulse has actually played that one, so that game seems to be the furthest, uh, the furthest along. And then the recent one was Deviation Games. That's comprised of former Call of Duty veterans, uh, Dave Anthony and Jason Blundell. And then when it comes to first party, we're still waiting on factions from Naughty Dog. Uh, Insomniac Games was very open about job listings for a multiplayer project. Also Gorilla, that second team that's working on a multiplayer project that we haven't really had too much movement on that one, but that goes back as far as 2018, uh, where Gorilla's still doing some mass hiring and they just got into that new that new studio. So there's a lot of multiplayer stuff in the pipeline where, you know, and we said it before, Sony has not had that huge knockout success in the multiplayer space. They've 
I don't want to be point blank about it, but they've dominated the single player space. You know, they're well known for that. And that's not going away because they've signed on all these external studios to handle this multiplayer stuff. And we're having some, you know, first party teams um, making a solid attempt at what I would hope is a really great in engaging uh, multiplayer title that can really stand on its own, right? I mean, this is where, I mean, you can't really fault Sony for trying to chase this in some way. Um, now, maybe they are spreading themselves, you know, thin here by signing on so many teams and letting some first party try it out. Um, I don't want them to be in a place where they're throwing a lot of things at the wall to see what sticks. But when you've got all these multiplayer projects and there's only, you know, so much time that people can commit to for these multiplayer games and there's already these big IP out there like Fortnite and PUBG and, you know, Battlefields uh, making a really big push lately. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, there's only so many hours in the day to win the consumer. And so... I mean, all Sony really needs here is is one one of these to do well, right? That's all it would take for one game to have that meteoric rise and success to generate all that incredible cash flow that these other franchises do. Yeah, they're they're working on a lot of these titles, but all they need is one of them. And if they do, they'll be in a, a very comfortable position with this game or these games or whatever game ends up working out. Uh, they'll be in a good spot on PS5 and presumably also a PC release as well. Moving on to our next news story, it looks like we finally have our very first PS5 soft model revision, and it's very much a soft revision, nothing major or anything like that. The console is principally going to look the same in all likelihood, uh, but right now at least we can see that there is a new updated digital edition console that was submitted for documentation on Sony's end, and also they submitted a new manual. So the current model is CFI 1000B, this one is CFI 1100B. And the only changes so far we can see is that this console is 300 grams lighter and the screw for the stand when you um, thread it in for a vertical orientation, it looks like you can do that by hand now and you no longer need um, a tool or a screwdriver or something like that, which is a you know nice change. Not a huge problem really. Uh, not many people are constantly going from vertical to horizontal with um, their console, so it's kind of a set it and forget it thing, but still a small change nonetheless. This might be something where at least with the uh, the weight decrease, Sony might be sourcing more parts or sourcing different parts rather to maybe manufacture more of these things if they've got some sort of production bottleneck and uh, well, a production bottleneck that's not quite the global semiconductor shortage, right? If there's something else that's problematic and they want to solve that to try and make more of these, that would um, you know explain why. But really, we see a lot of these soft model revisions throughout the life cycle of the console, even before we see that major. Um, design shift with a you know an expected slim console during year three so we're not quite there just yet but uh, down the road we'll have more of these that use less power they're lighter um, they might generate less heat right and those are all good things but this one seems relatively tame so I'm guessing this is a matter of Sony just trying to make sure that they can make more of these things which could also explain why it's only the digital edition right now and not the disc console um, if they want to try and make more of these machines because they might have underestimated the demand for um, the lower priced digital box and it'll probably still stay at lower volume but they just I'm guessing they still want more of these things out there because well it's still really hard to buy a PS5 but uh, for now, we'll keep our eyes on all the, the model updates that come out, and um, if we see any sort of meaningful changes, we'll always be sure to point them out. Now, for this next story, it looks like PS5 may have just crossed over a very big important sales milestone, which, if this is true, I'm guessing Sony would want to make a big deal about this by announcing it on the PS blog or on Twitter, but uh, so far it's sounding like, uh, well actually no, they could also wait to announce this during their next fiscal report, which is relatively close, but um, being reported right now from VG Charts, which keep in mind they're not 100% accurate, but for the dates ending, uh, for the date ending July 10th, apparently PS5 has crossed over 10 million consoles sold worldwide. In fact, their number is 10.01 million, and they've got a decent margin of error, of course, so that's why it's uh, noteworthy to, to say this is not confirmed. Just that if it's true, this would put PS5 as the fastest selling console ever to 10 million by a decent margin. The previous record holder was PS4 at 39 weeks. If this date is true, then that would be 35 weeks. That's a one month lead on uh, you know what was already the fastest selling hardware during a global pandemic during a global semiconductor shortage it's just it's still miraculous that we've uh, i mean and we've said it before but it's like there's all these factors working against it and yet they're still making more of them there's still so much demand 
what what would it look like if they met demand it's just uh insane really obviously the company's doing very well uh, and microsoft too they're still selling plenty of xboxes um i think the only machine right now that is uh sitting comfortably is series s where for a lot of countries the, de the demand seems to be met you can finally just go and buy that thing um, in the u.s it's been um, on sale on websites for a few hours before it sells out so that's definitely one where it's getting there um just because it's obviously going to be seen as less desirable amongst like the high powered you know series x and, and ps5 uh, whether it's the digital edition or the desk console um, but we'll still have months to go until these uh, consoles are comfortably easy to buy in store. Um, but for now, 10 million is a huge milestone. We should be hearing from Sony um, soon about if the console has in fact crossed 10 million. Moving on to our next news story, it looks like we've got more industry consolidation going on with Tencent offering $1.27 billion to acquire the Sumo Group, which includes Sumo Digital, which this is a developer that Sony's worked with uh, recently on Sackboy Big Adventure, but also Little Big Planet 3. So this is a, uh, an external team that Sony has felt relatively comfortable with in recent years, and Sackboy Big Adventure, great game. Little Big Planet 3 was also actually a solid entry, um, one that I think at that point wasn't really nearly as popular as it was on PlayStation 3, but you know the point is um, Sony was working with them, and now, uh, while they haven't been acquired yet, the offer was accepted, so this was something where all the shareholders and everybody had to be in agreement to uh, you know, accept the $1.27 billion bid, and Tencent's been doing this with a lot of uh, game companies lately, so they're trying to acquire studios from... Uh, well, worldwide, actually. So they're doing it in the U.S. and Europe. Um, so it's not really an isolated thing. And I know a lot of people don't really care much for Tencent. And trust me, there's certainly some concern there. At least in the short term right now, they've been, uh, for the most part, hands-off with projects. As in, this shouldn't really affect any sort of potential um, deals with what Sony's doing with Sumo right now. Either, um, you know, ones that we don't know about or ongoing support for Sackboy Big Adventure or any sort of potential for them being, you know, working with them in the future, signing on another game. Right now, what we're hearing is that the Sumo Group um, and Sumo Digital are staying, you know, the same, like everybody's in their same leadership roles, um, kind of operating as they, they were before, right? So short term, it looks like there's nothing um, that would be, that would really change here. And Sumo is quite big. They have a lot of teams. Um, I think they've got like 700 something employees just at Sumo Digital alone. And then the rest of the group uh, is over you know, 11, 1200 people. So it's a very big, um, very big company with a lot going on, a lot of projects, even outside of PlayStation. Um, so I'm not sure how much Tencent really wants to get involved there when it seems like most of their acquisitions so far have been hands off, but we will, um, we'll keep our eyes on this and see what happens uh, long term when it comes to how they handle the company, but also if there's any continued PlayStation involvement. Now, we've been talking a lot lately about The Last of Us HBO TV series, but that's because it's finally starting to film, and that would explain why we're hearing about all the cast members or seeing pictures of what's going on on set. But recently, this news is perhaps the most eye-opening in terms of the scope and scale of this project, if it wasn't already obvious from HBO's involvement or the talent that's overseeing this creatively. So recently, we heard from Damian Petty speaking with Forbes. He's the president of ATSE uh, 212. He leads the, uh, the Hollywood crews in Alberta and recruiting people. He says that this project is nearing the eight-figure mark per episode, so we're talking $10-plus million plus for every single episode. And even if he's referring to the Canadian dollar, that still is a, an insane amount of money, the highest uh, or one of the highest for HBO's um, portfolio and you know backlog next to Game of Thrones. I mean, it's really kind of nuts just how much... HBO is putting into this and obviously I'm sure PlayStation Productions is really going all in on what is probably their most important project next to the Uncharted movie which even that it's like okay yeah it's a theatrical release but this is going to be I think this has more weight to it right it's long running it's HBO so I, I'm sure they're putting a lot of energy into making sure that this show works um, and we also found out about who's playing Tess which is Anna Torv so that's another cast member uh, jotted down it's just we got a long, we got a lot of waiting to do until we see more about the show. But I mean, really, we've talked about it on a weekly basis. I'm not sure how much more we can really find out, but the budget is certainly an eye-opening one. 
Next up, for those that may have forgotten, uh, for the PS3 and the PS Vita PlayStation Store, these are still online. You can buy games indefinitely, of course, but the one caveat was that uh, July 20th was the cutoff date for developers to submit new games for release on PS Vita, and that was still very much in effect. So that means we're past that date. We now have our final lineup of brand new PS Vita games on the PlayStation Store, and those games are Killer Dolls United, Brotherhood United, Ultra Mission, Russian Subway Dogs, Mind Maze, and Witchcrafty. Those are the final PS Vita games. So just want to throw these developers some love. If you've got a Vita, maybe consider buying one of these and trying it out. It's, uh, it's something where, remember these developers, they were not told about that cutoff date. Only a few of them had an idea that it was coming, but they didn't know. Um, some of them were really caught off guard and they had to either scrap their PS Vita version, which is throwing away work essentially, or crunching to make sure they got it out on time for what is inherently a, an unsuccessful dead platform, basically. They were doing it for the love of PS Vita. So just wanted to call it out. It's a sad day, but at least you can keep buying the content. And so at some point, if you want to pick up a Vita, just know you still have a, a large library that's waiting for you to check out and try. Um, the used market's still ridiculous. And well, the modding scene is also a very viable option too. So I'll still always advocate for PlayStation Vita. Now this next one is pretty wild. So initially this was reported as PS4 consoles being used to mine cryptocurrency in Ukraine, which that in itself isn't really a bad thing. I don't even really know you can mine crypto on a games console. I'm pretty sure you can't unless you have some sort of elaborate jailbreak, but I digress. Either way, it's not really a bad thing, just that based on the local government, you either can't mine crypto or a lot of these illegal farms, they get caught because well, they're just stealing the electricity because the energy usage is so high, it eats into your profits. So depending on the efficiency of your farm, some of these places just steal electricity somehow. Um, so they thought it was that, it was on the suspicion of that, but it turns out these 3,800 PS4 consoles in this giant warehouse or wherever, all on these racks, were actually using bots to grind out the premium currency in FIFA 21. And then they were turning around and selling those accounts online. So instead of buying the currency through the online storefronts, you can pay a cheaper price to buy a whole account that has all the, the currency and the players that you're looking for or what have you, right? I don't I don't play the game, but um, you know, this this is very commonplace. That's why when you look on places like eBay or I don't know if you know where to look. I mean, you can find bot accounts that are um, fairly cheap and loaded up with all the currency. And this is like how they do it, right? It's not unheard of. These are legitimate on the low businesses that a lot of places do run. And uh, yeah, they were using 3,800 PS4s. Definitely an interesting site to see, but not one that's too foreign. Uh, I am uh, reminded of the legitimate use of PS3s where they were put on huge racks for you know supercomputing capabilities. U.S. Air Force, I think, they had uh, 1,100 consoles, I think, 1,200 consoles, somewhere around there. I actually have one of those systems. That was a separate uh, video we did where I bought one of them because um, they were part of the government surplus. That's, a, an, that's an interesting collectible that I have. But uh, yeah, people do that with consoles. Weird stuff. Now, with all that out of the way, it is time to get to Let's Talk Plus, the weekly Let's Talk PlayStation giveaway where one of you can win a $10 PSN code. I would like to congratulate this viewer right here. I'll be contacting you very soon via email or Twitter. And if you would like to win a $10 PSN code, it's very easy. Follow the link down below. Supporting this channel a number of ways can gain you an entry. And now announce the winner next week because I'm trying to help pay for your games. Those are all the news stories that I want to talk about with you all from this past week. Uh, no Tuesday video. Didn't have one ready in time, so... That will be coming this Tuesday. Uh, maybe I'll have another one ready since I kind of work on a few things at the same time, but I don't know, maybe not since I'm kind of, I'm falling behind on a lot of this stuff. But um, yeah, that's coming next week. And then that's all I've got for you for now. So that concludes this week's episode of Lost Talk PlayStation. I'm Ryan Panecki. Thank you all so much for talking with me and I will see you all next Friday.